tab again. So now I'm moving Linux syllabus.txt and I'll just move it to uh, Linux.txt or something like that. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to remove this file, Linux syllabus.txt, and really just rename it to Linux.txt. So I'll hit enter here and I'll do an ls again. And now you can see there is no Linux syllabus.txt anymore, that now it's just called Linux.txt. So that's what the move command does. And let me just show you a couple more things here, uh, the make directory and the remove directory commands I want to show you. So uh, let's make a directory under the hold directory here. If I print working directory again, you'll see I'm in slash home slash peri slash hold. And if I do an mkdir and say uh, uh, just temp or something like that. So I make this directory called temp and I do a listing now. You'll see that the files are in here, Linux syllabus and Linux.txt, but there's also a directory under here now called temp. All right, and I can go into that directory with the cd command. I can do an ls and see that nothing's in there. Um, I can cd out of that directory by saying cd dot dot, and now I'm back in the hold directory. Okay, so that's the make directory command. Uh, once we learn how to edit files and create files, you can put files into those directories that you create. Uh, then there's also the remove directory command to get rid of directories. Uh, if the directory has something in it, you will not be able to remove it. You'll have to remove all the files inside of it first, and then uh, remove the directory itself. And that's just kind of a precaution. Uh, you, you don't want to be able to remove some directory accidentally and then all of a sudden, uh, I don't know, you've deleted all these important files. So that way it just makes sure that you've deleted all the files first, then you're allowed to remove the directory. Well, since I haven't put anything into temp yet, I'll be able to remove it with the remove directory command. And I'll just say it like this, remove directory temp, do that. And now when I do a listing, you'll see that there is no temp directory under the hold directory. Now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about text editors. There's two major text editors available to you in Linux, the Emacs editor and the VI editor. And you know, there's a bit of a religious debate about which one's better and which one people prefer. I want no part of that debate. I'm just going to show you both of the editors and you can decide for yourself which one you'd rather use. You at least have to know the basics of the VI editor because in certain circumstances that's going to be the only editor available to you on the system. Uh, for instance, if your uh, hard disk has crashed and you need to boot off of a fly copy disk and try and fix your hard disk, well the only editor that's going to be available to you in that circumstance is the VI editor because the program, the VI editor program is much, much smaller than the Emacs program and it'll fit on the floppy with all the stuff that you need to boot your system. So the VI editor is better in that circumstance and so you at least need to know the basics of it uh, for that reason and I'll show you the basics of both of them and then you can learn them at, at your, on your own time and sort of see which one you like better. Okay, so uh, let's start with the Emacs editor. And the way I'm going to launch it is go down to here, the main menu, go to Programs, Applications, Emacs. So I can click on this, or I could just type Emacs at the command line in the terminal window, all lowercase, and that would start up the Emacs window as well. All right, so I'll start up the Emacs editor, I'll click on this, and now this is the Emacs window that comes up here. And you can see it's running off the right-hand side of the screen. That's just because uh, my screen resolution is set so low for recording these videos. I'm just going to click on this button so that it all fits in one screen and you can see everything all at once. Okay, so this area right here would be the text of the file that you're editing or creating. Down here would be the name of the file. Uh, right now you can see it, see it just says scratch. That just means this is the scratch buffer. It's kind of like an introduction window for Emacs. And then down here where it says for information about the GNU project, uh, down there is what, th there would be various commands and things. You'll see, you'll see what I mean in, in a little bit. So let's talk about these menus up here. Uh, the buffers, that's the name of, of each of the windows or files that you have open. That's, that's the term that we use. You can see there's a scratch buffer. Um, and if we had some file open, that file would be listed in this menu as well. Uh, then there's a file menu to open a file, save a file, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's tools, there's search mechanisms so you can search through a file. And then there's this help menu as well. And let's talk about this one now. Uh, there's an Emacs tutorial entry in that help menu. So you could click on that to run the Emacs tutorial. I'm not going to walk you through the tutorial because it's very self-explanatory and it's very well written tutorial. So you can go through that and basically it's just kind of a learn by doing tutorial. So they'll just walk you through all the basic stuff you want to do with Emacs. Um, let me talk a little bit about what this thing over here on the right means, this C-H -H space T. This is a shortcut to enter the Emacs tutorial. So instead of having to use the mouse and go up to the help screen and, and scroll down to tutorial and click on it, you can just type Control-H 
So that's what the capital C stands for, is control. So you hold down the control key and you hit the H key. You let go of everything and then you hit the T key. So control H T is the way that we say that. And that will get you into the tutorial without having to use the mouse at all. Uh, down here, uh, you can notice that there's capital C's, which represent control, and there's lowercase c, which just represents the C key on the keyboard. So this one, the way we would say it is control H, control C, and for that, we would hold down the control key and hit H, let go of everything, hold down the control key and hit C, and that would execute this command. Okay, uh, let's look for another couple shortcuts. Um, here's, here's a good one because it shows you what the M, that, that there's an M key shortcut. So M here stands for meta. And the meta key is typically the alt key on the keyboard. Uh, sometimes on older keyboards, it was the escape key. Uh, nowadays, most keyboards, the meta key is the alt key. So here, what we're going to do is hold down the meta key and press period. All right. And then down here at the bottom, you can even see there's one uh, with a control and a meta. So this one, you're going to ho hold down the control key and the meta key and hit the percent key. And that's going to do this query replace thing. Uh, this is basically like a search and replace mechanism in Emacs. All right, so that's the basics of how you navigate around the menus uh, and, and how, what, the, what these various shortcuts mean. Now let's open a file. Actually, let's create a file from scratch. So we're going to open a file. Uh, we use this. We can either say Control X, Control F, or we can click on this menu item. I'm just going to click on the menu item since I already have it open. And now down here at the bottom, it says Find File. It says Tilde, then Slash. Now, tilde, that represents my home directory. So for me, that means slash home slash Perry. For you, that would mean something different. But whatever user you're logged in as, tilde just represents your home directory. All right? And now what I can do is I can specify some file name in my home directory. And actually, a command completion works down here. So if I just type HO, for instance, and then hit tab, it completes it to the hold directory. Okay, so I can, you know, I can use command completion right down here in the Emacs window. And let's just create a new file called silly.txt. So I'm going to hit enter here to create this file. And you can see now it says new file. If this file silly.txt already existed in the hold directory, then the text of it would be up here and, and it wouldn't say new file. Okay, so let's just create this file. Let's, let's type a couple things. This is a silly file, something like that. Um, what do you think? Uh, if I could type it, there we go. And, and there's, there's some uh, information in the file now. And now if we want to save this file, we can go under Files and go to Save Buffer. And that's going to save this file as silly.txt. Okay, so I'm going to click on Save Buffer. Also notice the shortcut, Control-X, Control-S. Okay, so I'll click on that. And now you can see down here it says wrote slash home slash Perry slash hold silly.txt. Now we've created this file and, you know, and it's saved. Okay, so, so that's the basics of the Emacs editor. Let me just show you a few more things. Um, you can always move around with the uh, arrow keys to move back and forth, to move up and down, that kind of stuff. You can also click with your mouse to go to various places in, in here uh, to, uh, to delete and edit and add stuff to the, to the, uh, to the file. Okay, so, so that's the basics. Let, let me just show you a couple more. Control A always brings you back to the beginning of a line. And then Control E always takes you to the end of a line. And if you walk through the tutorial, you'll learn those shortcuts like Control A and Control E. You'll also learn things to like kill an entire line or cut and paste a big section of text. All that stuff will be covered in the tutorial. So let's just exit out of this Emacs window now. And one way that we can do that is go under Files to exit Emacs, or we can use the shortcut Control X, Control C. I'm just going to click on this menu item, and that'll end our Emacs session. Um, Oh, and now it's saying, uh, do you want to save this file? I guess I've, I've changed it since the last time I saved it. So it's making sure that I want to save this. So I, yes, I do want to save it. And now it exits me out of Emacs. And now let's talk a little bit about the VI editor. So to use VI, let's get our uh, terminal window back up here and type VI at the command line is one way that you can get into it. Actually, first, let's go down into the hold directory. And you can see in here there's that file silly.txt. And let's edit that with the VI editor. Actually, you can see another file here, too, called silly.txt with a tilde after it. This is kind of like an older version of this file. In some sense, it's like a, a backup copy. Um, and, and so if you made some change and you screwed something up in there and, and you were upset about those changes, well, you can usually go back to the previous version by, you know, looking, getting this file and then, you know, renaming this file to this one. Okay, so uh, this is the newest version and this is the old version, the one with the tilde. So let's edit that file silly.txt. Okay, and we'll say vi silly.txt and hit enter. And now we're in the vi editor and there's the text of the file. 
Okay. Now, what you need to know about VI first is that there's three modes, and VI is in one of these three modes at any time. Uh, there's command mode that you can e execute commands, like to insert stuff or delete lines, things like that. Then there's X mode, uh, and the X mode uh, is, is like what you use when you're going to write the file and quit out of the file, that kind of stuff. And then there's edit mode when you're actually uh, changing stuff, when you're like adding text to the file. Okay.